give you um, a special moment or two. The Kester Lifetime Achievement Award is not uh, given out every year, number one. Let's say the IT Rise Awards have been going for 20 years. Uh, the first recipient of it was David Frith uh, back in 2000. And it was in that later that year that uh, a young Kester Cranswick unfortunately passed away from cancer. And uh, the senior journalists in the industry agreed to uh, rename the award that year as the Kester. And it was actually, uh, uh, we honoured Kester that year by uh, uh, awarding him the award posthumously. And this is going to be a joint presentation. Um, you can see there the previous winners. Um, Mary Mack was the last one. Uh, Stuart Kennedy, Australian. Stuart Corner, John Costello. Grove Phillipson, who's going to be talking shortly. Beverly Head, Hannah Dancer, Hannah Meredith. Kester himself and uh, David, the, uh, the one that won in the year 2000. And what I'd like to do is invite uh, Data <coughs> Cranswick uh, up on stage. And it's great that you came up from uh, Melbourne for this tonight. Greatly appreciate it. To say a few words <laughs> and also then invite Graham Phillips and up as well. travels in 1981. Um, it was the year Charles and Di married that year. Kester was 21 and very charming and dapper young man, full of wit and so well spoken with that English accent. Life with Kester was truly a fairy tale. We were blissfully happy the moment we met. Doris, his mother, knowing I was attending this event, sent me a beautiful black and white photograph of little Kester sitting in a large club chair, reading a large newspaper at 14 months. We thought it showed an early interest in the world of journalism. She was correct. Kester was the eldest out of four, then came David, Angus and Dora. Um, David is here tonight with me to share our feelings of pride and sorrow and sadness. Kester's achievements came early and he had many. Um, a scholarship <coughs> to the prestigious Hutchins School in Hobart, ducks at the school in his final year. In 1980, at the age of 20, a technical editor for What Camera Weekly, um, which was a Haymarket publishing um, a group in Teddington, the UK, um, that obviously did all the large magazines then. Um, what Camera Weekly was the go-to magazine for photographers, um, full of technical reviews he loved to write. In 1984, he was editor of Oric Ona, uh, which was one of the early um, computer magazines located in Cambridge. In 1985, he launched two new um, computer titles back at Haymarket Publishing. In 1986, um, back in Melbourne to join me, and became the editor of Computing Australia in Melbourne, and in 1908, the Sydney editor of Computing Australia. Um, we had a short stint as doing our own PR company, but it didn't last for too long because he was headhunted by Senator John Button in 1990 um, for, as an advisor for his science and, and technology. Um, Kester, instead of following his um, path of his um, grandfather, Bishop, or his father, um, the QC, um, I guess at the age of 18, he landed in the UK and um, started his own um, identity. Um, he also changed his name. Um, unfortunately, he worked with too many Christophers, and um, so he picked a, a, a name like Kester, um, a very distinctive and uncommon name you would not easily forget. He loved writing about cameras and tested them on weekends. Sunday nights you would find him tapping away on his typewriter, writing the reviews. He was the fastest two-finger typist I've ever seen. 
Graham Phillipson later wrote in his tribute, um, this guy was so prolific that more than once I thought Kester Cranswick must be a shared pseudonym for two or more writers. <laughs> his pseudonym was Mark Casey and he did write lots. John Stelicki launched computing in Australia. Um, that was in the UK, so advertised in the UK for a journalist and Kester responded. Kester was full of charm and confidence and was looking forward to heading to Melbourne. I knew straight away that he would be a great asset to computing and I don't think either of us could lead our luck. He was flying high at the age of 35 and very successful career. Hon Honourable John Button then sent me a, a letter in the week Hester died, which is on the 19th of January, 1996. He had been thinking of me a lot that week and wrote to express his deep sympathy. Kester was a lively intellect with a nice sense of humour and a good set of values. It was my privilege to have the opportunity to work with him and to enjoy those attributes of his character. Later in John's book after he retired, as it happened, he wrote, Kester Cranswick, a computer whiz, who had worked on our science and technology policy, fought his wife Beata and the young baby. The baby had been conceived in Fiji. I remember when Kester had asked for leave to go on holiday in Fiji. I refused because um, we were just too busy. He then told me they were trying to have a baby and he thought Fiji might do the trick. So I changed my mind. Kester, Kester unfortunately died two years later, and when I hear something about Fiji, I think of Kester and his baby. Our son is 23 and studying film and television in Melbourne, a spitting image of his handsome father and with the same sharp intellect. And to final quote, um, from Beverly Head, a freelance writer. Kester, a fine man and good friend and consummate professional. His life was all too brief, but filled with, filled to the brim with achievements professionally. So I'd like to share my and my family's gratitude for the naming of this award after him to an industry Kester loved and was dedicated to. Kester was a high achiever, um, had set some standards, a bright star then, and I think a bright star now. Congratulations to all of you orchestra reciprocants. Thank you for having me. Were. I always said that um, the, um, the editors and writers aren't the rivals, it's the publishers who are the rivals. And uh, the other stole my thunder a little, I was going to say that story. I remember very well, I was sitting in um, the offices of, of somewhere or other and I, I'd seen this name suddenly appear uh, as a byline for all sorts of IT articles, Kester Cranswick. And there were so many of them, as Beata said, I was sure this was more than one person. And, um, and I didn't know of this person, but I assumed, because of a slightly odd name, Kester, that it must have been a student him, uh, and I thought for, for multiple people. And then I'm, I'm sitting in my office one day, and I, I heard someone say, Kester Cranswick's on the phone, and I leapt up, I don't want to talk to this man, I don't want to talk to him. And um, I determined that he was a real person, it was his real name, and uh, he, he was only one person who was writing all those articles. Um, we subsequently became, became uh, quite good friends. And um, I was saying this unfortunate story to Beata earlier this evening. I was actually in Melbourne one night and I looked uh, up uh, Kester and Beata and went to dinner at their house in suburban Melbourne. And Kester and I went for a, a walk after dinner and um, he said to me, Graham, I've been getting these headaches. I, I've got to go to the doctor tomorrow to see what it is. And it was that next day that he was diagnosed with cancer and it was all through him. And um, uh, but I, I, I remember very well how well he stood up um, to it. Uh, horrible chemotherapy and all sorts of things. He kept working, he kept uh, living, he kept uh, 
doing everything he could, but uh, obviously it got him in the end. And um, it was uh, a very wonderful thing that these awards are, are named after him. It's good that he had a, a name like Kester. I wouldn't want to call them the Christophers or the Bruces or anything. I think the, the Kesters is a, is a great name for the award and uh, they're named after an absolutely wonderful person he is. Well, one of the great things about IT journalism is that you meet fabulous people, both colleagues, vendors, um, users of, of computer systems, and it's a fabulous career. I wouldn't swap it for anything. You get more travel than a travel journalist. Uh, it's, it's fabulous. Uh, I was the junket king in, once in the, in the peak of my career, but I think that Kester was the writing king. Um, I, uh, nothing but admiration for, for, for this man. It's a great, great shame that he was taken from us so early and fabulous that the award is named after him. Very, very appropriate. Um, thank you. Um, and I, um, I'm a former uh, winner of the award, which, for which I'm very grateful. But once you win a lifetime achievement award, you know it's all over. But it's only downhill from then on. Um, now, the winner of this year's award is, is a very deserving winner. Um, the Australian uh, computer journalism fraternity is mostly Sydney based. Uh, there's a few journalists and a few publications that aren't based in Sydney and in Melbourne. And, uh, I don't think there's any that are actually based anywhere else, though a few of the writers are. And um, Julian spoke to me uh, a year or two ago now and said, Who and I, I said, Julian, you, it's this guy in Melbourne who's incredibly well qualified. He should be the winner of this award. He's done more than just about any of us. And uh, his name's Stan, Stan Beer. And Stan should be the winner. And uh, I think. Um, Julian asked a few other people and everybody agreed and uh, I don't know uh, what I need to say about Stan. I believe he has a, has a short speech so he can talk about himself. My mother always said that if you don't sky about yourself no one else will. So I'd like to invite Stan Beer up to the stage to accept his award and sky about himself. Thank you, Stan. Thank you for this. Um, this would have come as a complete surprise to me if I hadn't seen my name up on the board for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and if Julian hadn't told me about it three weeks ago. <laughs> I know how nervous you must be appearing in front of me, so please just relax, settle down, and I promise this will be a short speech. It's easy to be cynical about award presentations and pretend they don't mean anything. And that might be true for some people, but not until you actually receive one do you understand what it's all about. This particular award, the Kester, has special significance for me because its namesake, the late Kester Cranswick, was not only a colleague, but a friend. I first met Kester when I started in this business as a rookie journalist at Computer World 30 years ago. Computer World was an amazing place back then, during the halcyon days of IT media. 
I went into an interview with the late Susan Coleman. We chatted for 15 minutes and then she hired me on the spot. I was flabbergasted and protested that she'd never seen me write a word. She just shrugged and responded that she didn't know how to write either. <laughs> anyway, luckily I was trained by an old Fleet Street journo by the name of Mike Harrison, also now departed, who could turn anyone into a writer no matter how bad they were. Kester had a couple of years experience on me and was working at the now defunct Computing Australia. A few years later we both got married and found ourselves living almost within walking distance of each other in Bayside, Melbourne. We became friends. Not, not long after Beata and Kester had their son Elliot, we had our first son Oliver and we would sometimes get them together for play dates. Coincidentally, Kester and I both found ourselves working as freelancers and it was here that I had my only problem with him. He was too good. Kester in those days was faster, more reliable and more knowledgeable than I. He's not here to dispute this, so I reckon I was better looking. <laughs> However, yeah. However, I owe Kester an everlasting debt of gratitude for fostering my career in technology journalism. He would always recommend me to a client whenever there was a job that he did not have time to do. It was on one such job, producing a daily newsletter for a Unix conference, that I met Jeremy Horry, who was then the editor of the Australian IT Pages. A few weeks later, Jeremy offered me a job as Melbourne Computers and High Tech Technology Correspondent. From there I moved into a similar, similar role at the Fin Review, and later I was headhunted by the dark side to become the strategy director for the tech practice of a large Melbourne PR firm. And that's where I met an old ABC and AAPT journo by the name of Peter Dinham. To give you some idea of how much I enjoyed my stint in PR, all Peter and I could talk about while we were there was what we were going to do after we left. <laughs> Thus the embryonic idea of ITY was hatched. And here we are today. I have to say that the last 30 years have gone by remarkably quickly. Along the way I have met some remarkable and fantastic people. Aside from Kester, just some of the names include the late Susan Coleman, whom I've already mentioned, the late Michael, Mike Harrison, whom I've always, already mentioned, Beverly Head, Graham Phillipson, James Riley, Stuart Corner, Lorraine MacDonald and Alex zaharov royd among many others who have worked with me elsewhere as well as at ITY. As far as I'm concerned, this industry is beyond comparison as a place to be and work. I want to thank Consensus Group and its sponsors for honouring me with this award, which I humbly and gratefully accept. Thank you. to the next 12 months and uh, getting lots of nominations in from you all to make it even bigger and better. I can see this now we've got all the different awards under one roof that this could be twice the size if not three times the size next year. So that's what we're aiming to do. And that was actually shared by uh, quite a few of the judges as we did uh, a lot of the judging just a, a week and a half ago about increasing the pipeline even more so that we uh, get better coverage and identify even more innovative solutions across Australia. Just finally what I'd like to do is to say our great thanks to our guest of honour, uh, Honourable Ed Huzik MP, for being here tonight and giving up his time to be with us and also for his words on innovation and also the discussions we had around the table. So we've got a uh, certificate to present to, uh, to Ed as well and uh, let's, let's do that. say thank you everybody for being here, um, thank you for the people that assisted uh, throughout 
obviously uh, always go back to the judges. If we didn't have the judges, it wouldn't happen. And uh, they all devote all of their time free of charge, which is fantastic. So I'll consider the uh, the pay of increase from zero to zero. That's okay. We'll do that. <laughs> so thank you very much indeed. And uh, let's look forward to an even bigger and better world's most successful awards program next year. Enjoy the rest of the year. Thank you.